Some say history is a river that flows endlessly. I say that history is a series of stories written by each person's experiences. Welcome to Stories, a history of Appalachia, one story at a time. Hello folks and welcome to the podcast. I'm Steve Gilly, along with Rod Mullins. And in 1923, two women were elected to the Virginia House of Delegates, the first women to achieve that office in the state. Today, we're going to tell the story of one of them, a lady by the name of Helen Timmons Henderson, who was elected to serve from Russell and Buchanan counties. This is interesting, Steve, considering the fact that they came from far southwestern Virginia. That's kind of unheard of for the time. Well, you know, I think far southwestern Virginia was a bit more progressive back then than you'd think, to be honest well, with you. Well, that's the way it sounds by this, so let's hear it. All right. Well, Helen Timmons was born in Cass, Missouri on May 23rd, 1877, but not by design, Rod. See, her parents were natives of Jefferson County, Tennessee, and they'd been visiting friends in Missouri at the time of her birth. Well, Helen came back to Jefferson County and attended Carson Newman College in Jefferson City, studying to become a school teacher. It was there that she met her husband, who was also her professor, Robert Henderson. Well, we won't say anything about that. But after Henderson married, they left East Tennessee and moved to coal country. In fact, they moved to Buchanan County, Virginia. Now, using her training, she decided to found a school for the youth of Buchanan County in order to provide them with a proper education, which she felt that they lacked. And thus, the Buchanan Mission School, which later would become the Mountain Mission School, was founded in the little town of Council in 1911. Now there, Helen served as assistant principal, and there, later on, the teacher and her husband became the principal. At this time, early in the 20th century, the mountains of far southwest Virginia were covered with forests overlaying vast coal reserves which stretched from East Tennessee through West Virginia and into Pennsylvania. The people who lived in this area were isolated and lacked proper schools. While few schools that existed were in old, run-down, vacant houses and were in session for just only a few months a year, if that. Ms. Henderson realized that without a proper education, the folks in the area would be at the mercy of powerful interests that could come in and exploit the rich resources of the area, giving no benefit to them. And that's why she chose to join the school in council. Now, Rod, have you ever been to council? Yes, I have. I've been there just a few times. And if you've been there, and I've been there too, it's just about as remote a place as you could find, especially Mm -hmm. in those days. Mm -hmm. Well, the town lays at the base of Big A Mountain, which, Rod, isn't the original name given to it, is it? No, it's not. (laughs) There is a unique (laughs) reason why it's given that name, though. Oh, yes, indeed. For you see, when the first pioneers entered the area, they found this mountain, which just goes up and up and up and up to one big blank mountain. Fill in the blank. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, we just won't (laughs) fill it in right now at this point. There were no schools, no real roads, and no opportunities for the residents of the town. Well, in August 1911, the Henderson family journeyed by train to St. Paul, Virginia, where they spent the night at the Blue Sulphur Hotel. And the next morning, they continued on to Honeaker, the nearest station to council, There they found a man who agreed to take them across Big A Mountain in a wagon for $6. And here the Henderson family learned just why Big A Mountain got the name Big A Mountain. Because for the first five miles, they passed hills and bluegrass farms, real pretty country. And they, you know, they didn't really believe the tales of how hard it was to get up over that mountain. Yet they saw a mountain ahead of them that got larger and larger and more forbidding as they neared its base. Suddenly, Rod, the bluegrass ended, and the road reared menacingly in front of them, flanked by huge boulders and precipices above and below. The pace got slower and slower. The hot sun climbed higher and higher. Team driver and passengers felt the dual effect of the scorching sun and the mountain climbing. Man, you wore me out on that trip just (laughs) telling me all this stuff. Wow. (laughs) Well, the Henderson soon became hungry. I am too. Well, a tree of red apples by the roadside tempted them, and they stopped, and they had purchased some of homemade cheese and crackers in Honeaker. Now, finding this insufficient, they stopped at a little roadside store for more, but they failed to find any. 
So they ate the cheese and crackers underneath an oak tree and drank cold water from a spring nearby. Now, after lunch, they approached a steep place over which the team could not pull the wagon. Now, the driver borrowed a team of mules to help get the load to the top, and often the passengers would have to get out and they'd have to walk to lighten the load. Now, on top, at last, to the left, the mountainside sloped steeping upward to the summit another 1,100 feet. Ooh. To the right, in front, it dropped downward into the valleys 900 feet below. If possible, the descent was more dangerous than the ascent. Now, late in the day, they reached the foot of the slope one mile from Council. It had taken them 10 hours to travel the 11 miles from Honeacre. That's unreal. Man. But Professor Henderson was the principal of the school, assuming charge of teaching financial affairs and discipline. Mrs. Henderson was the assistant principal. Her duties included care of the health and welfare of the students, supervision of the dormitories, religious and social life of the school, and serving as speaker in public meetings. Well, you know, she did such a good job organizing and running the school that local Democratic leaders tapped her to run for the Virginia House of Delegates and to make history as the first woman elected to that body. And she accepted the challenge. Wow. Helen Henderson took to the campaign trail in Buchanan and Russell counties, traveling around the coal fields, making political speeches, and meeting and greeting everyone she could. Helen became known as an excellent campaigner and a fine public speaker as well. Now, she also used a new innovation at the time in campaigning by driving her beautiful little Ford Roadster from place to place in the two counties in order to make just as many campaign stops and speeches as she could. In the end, on election day, she trounced her opponents by a margin of over 400 votes. Although word of her victory, uh, understandably, took two days to reach the town of Council because it was so far up in the mountains. Now, interestingly, the Richmond Times-Dispatch wrote of Henderson's opposition as being from, quote, some independent Democrats, Republicans, and wets, as you know, at that time, prohibition was a big thing. Mm -hmm. She was in support of prohibition. Helen took her new job seriously. She told the Times-Dispatch, quote, I'm not in the legislature for publicity. It's simply a question of public service with me and a duty that I owe to the people back in those counties which have elected me. I'd love to see her in that Ford Roadster. Oh, yeah. I'd say she that, tooled out just fine over those roads. I'd say she did, too. Well, Ms. Henderson quickly earned a reputation for strenuously advocating for the interests of far southwest Virginia, particularly when it came to needed public improvements. And it's always been one of those things, especially in far southwestern Virginia, like roads and, given her background, public schools. One of her first accomplishments, ironically, was approval of a new road, 6.2 miles long along the same route she traveled when she first appeared in Buchanan County over Big A Mountain. We won't say the word here. No. But stopping at the school gate there in council, which connected the town to the world. That new road is Virginia Route 80, still used today and, incidentally, part of a coast-to-coast -coast bicycle route called the Transamerica Bicycle Trail or, in Virginia, Bike Route 76, traveled by hundreds of cyclists crossing the country every year. Now, to her, though, that first six miles was just a start. Yes, it was, because she became the first woman to preside over the assembly. She also sat on four committees, roads and internal navigation, naturally, counties, cities, and towns, moral and social welfare, and executive expenditures. She was well on the way to a long and fruitful career in public service in Richmond, but unfortunately, Rod, that was not meant to be because by the spring of 1925, her health became a serious problem. And although she was renominated unanimously to her seat from Russell and Buchanan counties for the election that fall, she was sick enough that she had to return to her parents' house in Jefferson City, Tennessee, where she died on July 12, 1925, at the young age of 48. Wow. At her death, Governor E. Lee Trinkle praised her many virtues, clear vision, and noble aspirations, and ordered flags at the Capitol building in Richmond to be flown at half-staff in her honor. Now, Henderson is buried at Elm Grove Cemetery in Knoxville, Tennessee, and after one term, Ms. Henderson's daughter, Helen Ruth Henderson, 
was elected to the House of Delegates and became the first daughter to succeed her mother to that body. And let me make this clear, too. She was the first woman to serve as president of the House of Delegates. She was not technically the first woman to be elected because there were two women elected that same year. She was one of the two women who got elected. Wow. And that's the story of Helen Timmons Henderson, one of the first women elected from Appalachia to the Virginia House of Delegates in 1923, one of the stories that makes up the history of Appalachia. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast at iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or on your favorite podcast app. We're on Facebook at Stories of Appalachia, and we're on Twitter at Story Appalachia. Till next time, take care. So long, everybody.